Okay, sa so sobrang excited ko mga kaibigan, no more intro and let's talk about this Orus Ultra. Uunahin natin yung Asterix. The Asterix is cool. It is just like the uh, counterparts sa Intel side. Sa wakas, medyo maganda-ganda na yung mga Asterix na mga AMD motherboards lately compared in the previous uh, generations na medyo uh, pag uh, AMD motherboards it's a bit classic or uh, it doesn't come with this add-on kits na katulad nung mga nasa Intel motherboard. So, uh, ngayon mapapansin na natin na ang dami ng kung ano-anong mga body kits or ornaments or garnish na ang nilagay sa mga motherboards. But what is good is very functional yung mga ibang pinaglalagay na nila. Like the IO shield is now improved. Before, plastic lang yan. And uh, now, lately, you can see top-end motherboards with this uh, aluminum alloy uh, IO heatsink or IO shield. So, yun yung mga nag-improve lately na napansin natin with the X570 motherboards. But of course, we will be talking today about the X570 Orus Ultra. So, yan po yung pag-tutuunan uh, natin ng pansin. Uh, since I want to talk about this motherboard, actually, yung pinakabala ko dito sa motherboard na to is to go deeper than uh, talking about the motherboard itself or doing the real-world benchmark by going in-depth like uh, talking about the SMD side or the PCB side of the motherboard. Pero uh, I have linked down below the Buildzoid uh, review regarding that. Na sabi na niya lahat doon, na it went down to ano pang sasabihin natin or ano pang pag-uusapan natin kasi even the model of the VRM or even the model of the MOSFETs na banggit na niya doon so if you are a guy who is uh, really interested in terms of electronics or components in the SMD side of a uh, motherboard then this is the perfect video that you may watch okay so uh, since meron na ang review na ganun let's now jump onto the real world benchmark review of this motherboard in terms of uh, testing it, doing the benchmarks, overclocking, and of course, testing the fastest SSD, PCIe Gen 4 SSD that we have just encountered. So, yan is meron lang din po sa Orus. Uh, in terms of aesthetics, I don't have anything uh, na pwede pang uh, sabihin idagdag or whatsoever na tanggalin. I think everything is a uh, uh, looking good with this Orus Ultra. But uh, my only concern, which is uh, really a very big uh, uh, disappointment for me, for me lang, uh, uh, it's my personal preference or it's my personal opinion. Uh, I've encountered motherboards way back before, like a uh, 10 or a decade ago, that they used the fans to cool down the heatsink, chipset heatsink. That was way before. And uh, the common issue ng mga motherboards na yan is it ended up na yung mga fans ng mga heatsinks is nag-wear uh, uh, down or kumbaga nagde-deteriorate in the long uh, run. Parang kumbaga after 3 years, 5 years, ayun makikita mo na na uh, biglang natatanggal yung uh, fans or kaya yung uh, buzzing sound. And the most common problem, heatsinks purpose is to cool down the chipset. From time to time, umiinit po yan ng umiinit mga kaibigan. And of course, comes the time na yung mismong fan or mismong yung fan assembly is madedetouch na sa heatsink. Which is, I think, the most um, disappointing move by the X570 or the motherboard companies. Because the problem in here is they have tried this before and it didn't really work that well. Anyway, that is just my opinion mga kaibigan based on my experience and uh, based on what I've encountered before. Pero let's go back with this Orus Ultra. What makes it good? What I really love with this motherboard is of course the VRM cooling heatsinks. Well, after last year, very disappointing performance of their motherboards sa second gen lineup ng uh, AMD Ryzen. Eto ngayon at bumalik ang Gigabyte. At ibinalik nila ngayon yung classic design ng kanilang uh, VRM heatsink or yung cooling uh, solutions nila para sa VRM. Binalik nila yung may mga fins na heatsink. So it's really a good move for Gigabyte. And uh, what makes it more uh, very 
convincing that it will really perform well on papers yung paglagay nila ng direct touch copper heat pipes. So yung copper kasi mas mabilis yung transfer ng heat from the SMD components to the copper and yung copper naman ita-transmit niya yan sa aluminum which is uh, the aluminum heat sinks uh, will uh, dissipate the heat faster compared dun sa copper. So the hybrid setup of having a copper heat pipes and aluminum heat sinks for your cooling solutions is really a big help dun sa VRM ng Gigabyte Aorus Ultra. Now we move on to test this motherboard if it's really true, if it really performs well. And yes, before I will proceed, thank you Sir Gilbert Artates for the link ng uh, isang uh, article or the uh, benchmark na nagawa nila because I was looking for the highest frequency na nagawa with an AMD 3700X na nailatag sa online and uh, uh, tamang tama it is uh, showing up in there that uh, 4.3 gigahertz with 1.475 volts if I'm not mistaken correct me if I'm wrong basta nandito sa description yung link ng source natin with that benchmark and MSI X570 Ace. So, yan po yung motherboard na ginamit nila. And yes, of course, that guide helped me to have the confidence that I can push this motherboard up to its maximum limit. And yes, we did it. 4.3 gigahertz, stable po yan mga kaibigan, at 1.4 volts. We run the Cinebench, successful po yan. We run the IDA64, very successful po yan mga kaibigan. And of course, we did a couple of benchmark with the AMD 3700X. Of course, ang pinaka uh, benchmark na importante is uh, Ryzen is Ryzen. It is a processor created for an all-around uh, activity like uh, gaming, productivity, anything that uh, will uh, really... Uh, take advantage the multi-core performance of this processor and yun, nagran po tayo ng Adobe Premiere, we did couple of benchmarks, rendering having the uh, PBO with the manual overclocking, manual overclocking disabling the PBO and having the PBO alone to maximize the potential of this processor and this motherboard and yes, the motherboard roughly reach 100 degrees Celsius with that manual overclock 4.3 gigahertz. You might be worried na ang sinasabi ko na dito is around 100 uh, degrees Celsius. Kasi actually, the 100 degrees Celsius temperature for the MOSFET or for the VRM is, is still uh, far from the uh, normal na max temperature 125 degrees Celsius. Now, since I'm not still confident dun sa benchmark ko, so I installed the RTX 2080 Ti, installed 1 Tera Gen 4 PCIe SSD from Aorus as well, and then 2 Tera, and do uh, transfer ng mga files, and dito natin nakita yung pinakamabilis na pag-transfer or pag-copy ng file that is around... Um, 500 MB. Kasi kung 500 MB, even an NVMe SSD, uh, magkakaroon pa rin ng loading time yan eh. Parang makikita mo 2 seconds or 1 to 2 seconds. Pero with this, para ka lang nag-copy ng 1 KB file. Imagine that mga kaibigan, Gen 4 SSD up to 64 gig transfer rate. Gen 4 to Gen 4 na PCIe SSD. Ganun po yung lumabas. So I'm now talking about the real world uh, benchmark because uh, I know you have seen benchmarks uh, with the gaming side so medyo iiwasan na natin yan marami na masyadong uh, nilabas na mga benchmarks so I will just be focusing on uh, the extra things na pwede natin gawin sa computer and here I'm trying to showcase how the PCIe Gen 4 works pero of course if uh, even you have that kind of SSD kung yung pagtatransferan mo naman is hard drive pa rin or yung pagtatransferan mo is an SSD pa rin na traditional SSD or SATA SSD, it will still fall down to the transfer rate kung anong pinaka-maximum na uh, capability ng uh, lower-end SSD or the older SSD. Now, going back to the benchmark natin kanina pagdating sa overclocking with the Adobe 
uh, premier rendering, nakita natin dito that there is no significant difference of having uh, PBO enabled at saka manually overclock kahit na krenank na natin yung processor up to 3 point or 4.3 gigahertz. So, medyo dito natin mapapansin mga kaibigan that uh, manual overclocking is I think uh, not anymore giving a huge advantage pagdating dito sa mga sumunod na Ryzen 3rd Gen lineup ng AMD because AMD now gave us the opportunity na even you are not that kind of enthusiast guy once na enable mo yung uh, PBO or yung precision boost overdrive automatically your processor will have this frequency na 4.2 or 4.1 because when I did the benchmark it is roughly going up to 4.1 to 4.2 gigahertz and uh, the benchmark during the rendering process, makikita nyo na it's just a few seconds difference compared dun sa manually overclock na talagang na pwersar natin or na-stress natin yung VRM. Uh, it's already the maximum uh, frequency so far recorded. Especially when I tried to upload this uh, benchmark with a user bench. So, dito natin makikita na, uy, 100% percentile. So, ibig sabihin halos parang tayo pa lang yung may nagawang pinakamabilis na processor uploaded online. Actually, kanina may mga natanggap akong parang uh, mga uh, questions na bakit sir yung frequency ko biglang natalon tapos yung temperature ko rin biglang natalon. So, ayun, medyo nagkakaroon sila ng worries na dapat, uh, I think with the AMD, they should have advised the uh, consumers or the end users na highlight dapat nila tong part na to that having that PBO enabled, you should buy an aftermarket cooler. So, they should have convinced the aftermarket uh, cooler manufacturers to promote their uh, cooling solutions pagdating ng release ng AMD because that is the big partner ng AMD 3rd Gen release. And uh, that's it mga kaibigan for this X570 Aorus ulit. Uh, my final thoughts is it's the best motherboard that you can have. It comes with this uh, better cooling solutions compared to the previous lineup. Having that direct heat pipe an aluminum heat sink is not a common thing, it's not a normal thing, it's not just another cooler that is implemented to a motherboard. That is really something significant that made this motherboard excel or perform better than the competitor, especially when uh, I saw the uh, Reddit uh, tier list in terms of motherboard, it shows in there that the gigabyte line of, of motherboards are now in a better rank compared to the MSI, which is baliktad last year. In the previous years, you can see a lot of uh, good uh, MSI motherboards but this year, it is now more on the Gigabyte Aorus side and uh, even the ASUS motherboards doesn't uh, have that uh, enough models to go on par with the Gigabyte lineup. Imagine the Gaming X as their base model and it's in the um, second to the bottom where there are a lot of couple of motherboards like the MSI and the ASRock at the bottom side of the tier list. Well, that is not yet uh, the final list, but as I can see, uh, it may because I have also benchmarked the MSI X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi and uh, I really encountered a few problems like I'm trying to overclock an APU and the uh, uh, temperature of the VRM is na at a 90 to 100 degrees. So that is really weird for a motherboard with that kind of pricing to have that kind of temperature for the VRM. So I can confirm that the Gigabyte Aorus Elite or the Gigabyte Aorus Ultra is the best motherboard that we may consider in the X570 lineup in the next few days or in the next few months for our new AMD 3rd gen processors. By the way, the Aorus Elite, I recommend that 